It is so wonderful to be back here at Wheaton. I love this place. I was sitting on the plane coming over, and I realized that I have had 12 of my senior staff from Wheaton. And the one person who wasn't married somebody from Wheaton. <laughs> he spotted her at a lecture I was giving here and thought, I like what I see, and got married to her. Oh, well. I want to begin, as I always do, by praying in Aramaic. And it was so good. In my first lecture just now, I was sitting next to somebody who was a Syrian, Aramaic. So I know there is one person who will understand what I say this morning. She made Baba, Brona, Brocha, Kosha, Ha'alaha. Amen. I want to read to you this morning from Romans chapter 8, verse 17. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his suffering in order that we may also share in his glory. I want to look this morning at the issue of being heirs of suffering and of glory. The three go together. Heirs, we are children of the Almighty. We all know that we are called to be children of God. We all know that we are children of God. But isn't it incredible that this passage says to us, if we are heirs, we share in the suffering of Christ. Yes, we are heirs of God. We are children of God, of the only creator, master of the universe. And if we are his heirs, we must also share in his inheritance. So many of these wacky Christians, you know wacky Christians? You know, on wacky Christian television, isn't it awful? <laughs> isn't it terrible? Well, they all talk about how wacky Christianity is. Everything is super. Everything is supernatural. I can tell you what Christianity is about. This passage tells us that if we are heirs of Christ, who is the heir of God, we also share in something we inherit. And what do we inherit? It's not just an easy good time. We inherit suffering. Since I last came here, my life in Iraq has totally changed. Because now we have not just become a people who talk about the suffering of the persecuted church. We have become the persecuted church. We, as Christians in Iraq, there used to be 1.5 million Christians in Iraq. Now there are about 200,000. The biggest Iraqi Christian community is where? Chicago. 
Did you know that? That the biggest Iraqi Christian community is not in Iraq, it's where you are here. Every day they are experiencing what is happening to their family, to their friends, to their community. A few weeks ago, well, it was about two or three months ago, one of our people phoned me. He said, Abuna, Abuna, my father, my father, something terrible has happened. I said, what's happened? He said, ISIS, we call them Daesh in Iraq, the Islamic terrorists, have come to my house. And they said to us, if you don't say that you will follow Islam, we will kill your children. So he said, I could not see my children killed. I said the words of Islam. I said, I will follow Islam, and Muhammad is his greatest prophet. He said, Abuna, does that mean that Yeshua, Jesus, doesn't love me anymore? I said, Jawed, Yeshua will always love you. He will always follow you, and you will always follow him. The next day, I had another call, this time from Yosef. He said, it was terrible, Abuna. Isis came into our house, and they didn't ask me to say the words of foreign Islam. They looked at my children, and they said, you are Christians. If you want to live, you must say that you follow Islam. The children took each other's hands. They said, we love Yeshua. We love Jesus. We have always loved Jesus. Jesus talks to us, and we talk to him. We will never say anything against our Jesus. They shot each one of them dead. Five of my children, I see them as my children, were killed. Why? Because in their innocence as young people, they would not deny that they were followers of Jesus. We must never deny that we are the followers of Jesus. We must know that we are called to not just share in the wacky things, but we are called to inherit as heirs the sufferings of Jesus. Jesus, who died on the cross for us, Jesus, who knew the pain of Calvary. He knows the pain of my people. Every day I have heard of the suffering of my people. Most of them have fled from the original Christian place where the Christians resided. It was a place where the belief in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob began 
2,700 years ago, a really miserable evangelist went to Nineveh. He went by a submarine. <laughs> really miserable. You will not find anything positive in the book of Jonah. He just says, I want to die. I wish I was dead. Well, the people of Nineveh began following the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 700 years later, another miserable man turned up. There's quite a history of miserable people going to Iraq. There was the miserable evangelist Jonah, then there was Doubting Thomas, and then there was me. <laughs> so Doubting Thomas, though never called that in Iraq, taught the people to love Yeshua, the God who is made known as an heir of the Father, the God who lives amongst us as the one who was and who is and who is to come. Now, I cannot be in Iraq most of the time. Our people have fled to the north where we're doing a huge amount of work in Kurdistan. My colleague, Dr. Sarah Ahmed, is heading up all the relief there, and she is a Muslim, protecting the Christian refugees. Isn't that an incredible act of the kindness of God? I am down in the south, in Jordan. And there we have not only provided food, relief, and health care, but accommodation and also school. We have the best school ever. It's like a younger version of Wheaton. <laughs> it's absolutely outstanding. I went to school just before Easter, and I gave the children all a cross from Bethlehem, made of olive wood. And I went back last week, and the teacher said to the children, where have you all put your cross? And the children responded with a loud voice, we have put it in our heart. The children said they have put the cross in their heart. And what encouragement that was to hear that the cross was still central to our children. And they go about their life, and they know that Jesus is always with them, and he loves them, and he will never leave them. That is the amazing thing about our young people, and our older people, and our suffering people, is that they know that Jesus is still with them. They know that they may have lost everything. I was looking around one of the classes one week, and I could not see one child in the class whose family, in part at least, had not been killed. But they knew that Jesus was still with them. I know that Jesus is still with you. 
I love being here at Wheaton. And I know that today, as we think of being heirs and knowing the suffering of the cross and the suffering of the church, do you know what has happened? Heaven has opened and come to earth, and that is glory. We know that we are heirs. We know the suffering of the cross and the suffering of the people of God. And we know the glory of when heaven has come to earth. When you go from here, I always say one thing to you. None of you will probably remember what I say. Does anybody remember? Who said that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, that is exactly it. <laughs> you can have a cross if you said that. <laughs> Here, you can, be, you can be the cross monitor. <laughs> and one for you. <laughs> Don't take care, take risks, okay? And you must know what it means to take risks. And I thank God that in 1998, Tony, Dr. Tony, came and got me at Coventry Cathedral and said, you're coming to Wheaton. And I thought, why? <laughs> and it was one of the best things ever. I love it here. I, when I was young, younger, <laughs> I was lecturing here one day in Chicago, and a little girl came and sat with me for lunch. And I said to that little girl, her name was Zoe, I said, when you grow up, she was only at school, you must come and work for me and then go to Wheaton. <laughs> so she has been to work for me and she is coming to Wheaton next year, aren't you, Zoe? She's there. So, it's very good. Would you like a cross? Here we are. <laughs> so, it is truly wonderful being here and knowing that God's glory is with you and you and all of you. His heavens have opened. Heaven has come to earth in his glory. Yes, we know horrendous suffering. Yes, our people have been killed and persecuted this year. Like I could never have imagined would happen. But somebody said to me in the class before, chapel. How can you say you're so happy? Because the Lord is here and his spirit is with us. And we do not give in. And we keep moving forward. And we take, keep taking risks. Just like I say to you every time I come, take risks, not care. Now, 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 now. I know before I leave, there'll be lots of people who say, I want to come and work with you. Well, hard luck. 
because it's up to the college to decide, not me. All right? <laughs> and I've got a very good assistant now. I don't know where he is, but he graduated. He's there. He graduated when? Two years ago from here? One year ago. One year ago. Oh, there we are. <laughs> so it does work sometimes. And I say, I say that the college decides who comes and works with me. But it didn't with him. He wrote to me and said, I want to come. So he did. <laughs> I, I'm a very ardent Cambridge fan, being a Cambridge fellow and graduate of there. And the other day, we had our interviews. And the people we were interviewing were from Cambridge and Wheaton. And the Wheaton people got the job. <laughs> not, not the Cambridge people. <laughs> what does that say to you? <laughs> this one is for you, because I know you, don't I? Yeah, come and take it then, quickly. <laughs> Bye.